wonderful good afternoon ladies and gentlemen welcome back here at the group exhibit hydrogen fuel cells and batteries we are in fact celebrating our 23rd year anniversary we have been here since 1995 discussing hydrogen fuel cells and also batteries um, our, my upcoming talk will also discuss a company that has been around for more than 23 years. It has been around for 140 years and celebrating its 140 years anniversary, which is Riggs Industries. We will be discussing uh, the, gen, uh, the compression uh, innovation um, from Riggs Industries. For that, please welcome with me on stage the Business Development and Marketing Manager, Mr. Christopher Allen. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Welcome, Christopher. Um, also, I would like to say hello and ni hao, konnichiwa, annyeonghaseyo to all our online guests. We are an international fair. We are live streaming from the fair. Also, uh, the videos of all interviews will be available on our website later on, which is h2fc-fair.com. Christopher. It is your first time here at this fair. How has the fair been going so far? Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, we have had a lot of wonderful conversations with uh, potential partners and customers. And uh, it's really great to see so many uh, interested people coming through and trying to create a, the, the hydrogen economy. Uh, and we're really excited to be a part of that. Before we go into detail uh, on the product that you're exhibiting here, um, could you brief, briefly give us a company introduction on Rick's Industries? Um, yes, so as, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we're celebrating our 140 year anniversary uh, this year. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so we were founded by Mr. E.A. Ricks uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. He was uh, a engineer from the University of Berkeley and developed the, uh, an innovative uh, compressor for uh, drilling applications. Uh, back then, the, uh, the, it was during the gold, uh, gold rush. So we have a long history of supporting and uh, supporting nascent and growing markets with innovative uh, solutions around compressed uh, gases. Uh, and uh, you know, from there, we've moved on and uh, developed a number of innovative products in um, uh, pneumatic artilleries that uh, were then replaced with uh, dynamite, uh, which started our, our initial partnership with the United States Navy and uh, have a, a very, very long relationship with the United States military, providing uh, uh, compression solutions for them. And uh, in the last uh, 50 years, you know, relatively short time in, uh, in our history, uh, we've expanded into uh, other markets. And for long, how long have you been in the fuel cell industry? Uh, we have been uh, supporting the fuel cell industry since its uh, very beginning in various, various point solutions. Um, uh, our commercial group has been uh, developing custom, uh, custom compressor solutions for our customers for over 50 years. Very, very, uh, um, we like to call it a multitude of niche, niches. Okay. So we develop a lot of, uh, a lot of solutions for, for very, very specialized applications. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really interesting because it gives us an opportunity to get involved with uh, industries that are uh, young and growing and helping develop the, the products and the, the services that uh, uh, are, may not fully be understood. Uh, we're, we have a lot of history and uh, expertise dealing with that. And uh, your title uh, is mentioning uh, compressor innovation. Um, what are the challenges in general of compressing hydrogen? Well, hi hydrogen is a, is a unique uh, and challenging uh, molecule to work with. Uh, since it's the uh, first element, it is one of the smallest molecules. So sealing is always a, a very challenging thing to deal with. Um, it has a propensity to basically leak through everything. So sealing is an issue, um, as well as hydrogen embrittlement. So metals uh, have uh, mechanical, the mechanical properties that interact with the hydrogen have some uh, unique things that need to be dealt with. 
as well as um, ongoing maintenance. So at uh, very high pressures, uh, it has a tendency to degrade materials. So uh, there are a lot of little details that need to be worked out when uh, dealing with compressed hydrogen. Um, so there are different methods of compressing hydrogen. There are uh, compressors called diaphragm compressors, intensifier, ionic, and reciprocating compressors. What in the world are reciprocating compressors? Uh, reciprocating compressors is a very old technology, very proven. Uh, essentially, it's just really a piston cylinder, uh, a, you, uh, just like a car engine. Um, it, uh, you, we have a crankshaft and a connecting rod and a piston in a cylinder. As it moves up and, da moves up and down, it fills with uh, gas of various types, whatever you know, the process gas happens to be. And as it moves up in the cylinder, it compresses the gas and moves it out. Um, it, that is the, what a piston-style compressor is. And that's what we have been uh, uh, um, developing and perfecting over 140 years. We have it down to a, a, a very, very uh, established position. Yeah. And uh, so, in order not to contaminate a fuel cell, it is very uh, critical to produce pure hydrogen. Uh, what do your compressors do differently from others uh, in order um, to prevent any uh, abrasion or dirt in the fuel cell? Um, yes, so, so we specialize in oil-free applications. So there are two ways, there, there, when it comes to reciprocating compressors, you can have an oiled compressor or an oil-free. And what we do is uh, we have a uh, crosshead and a dis distance piece that separates where all the oil is contained. Uh, we have a number of seals and a oil-free zone where we separate the compression area from the uh, oiled crankcase. And it's, it's very effective, so the pro your process gas never comes in contact with any oil, which is a, a vital, of vital importance when you're dealing with other hazardous gases, such as oxygen at high pressure, um, it, it, which is one of the things we're best known for, um, market leaders in the ox small oxygen boosters, and uh, taking that experience and expertise to the, to the hydrogen market. Okay, and um, uh, so now I understand a little bit of what you do. You have a compressor that is oil-free using reciprocating uh, technology. Um, yes. But why are you here at this fair? Well, you know, it's 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 really interesting to see the this market kind of grow and mature and evolve. So, uh, what we see is it's uh, very very interesting and uh, important market for us. And we're out here really trying to uh, find great partners to work with to provide complete turnkey solutions. So what we see is um, uh, being necessary to really drive this, this, uh, this hydrogen economy is end, end customers really just want turnkey solutions. And uh, as what we've seen in the past and in the last 140 years and as we've helped develop some, of, some other markets is you start off with a few early adopters that are you know, okay with pulling in components from all over the place and putting things together themselves. But now we're really at a, a place and uh, you know, as I look around, this, there's a lot of booths here, a lot, a lot of traffic. We're at a point where um, uh, the cost end customers just want to buy a solution, don't want to have to deal with integrating all of these things themselves. Thank you for saying this, Christopher. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. This is something I highly agree on. In Germany, we have this call, a term called silo thinking. <laughs> yes. uh, um, so, um, so what you are trying to say is there's a whole value chain. Every exhibitor has their own little um, part that they are contributing. But at the end, there are also some businesses uh, new in the fuel cell industry. Um, they want to start completely, but then they just want to don't buy a compressor here and a bipolar plate there and the whole fuel cell system there, electrolyzer there. They want a whole turnkey solution. So in which way do you think can RIGS contribute to a turnkey solution? 
Oh, uh, thank you for asking. So there are a number of different applications uh, that, uh, that we see in terms of um, different use cases. So there's power to gas, where you're taking um, uh, excess power and convert using an electrolyzer, storing that, uh, that hydrogen and, and, and throwing it back into the grid or doing something else with it. Um, in all of these, uh, or uh, you know, there's also the vehicle market, which is, uh, uh, I think, uh, another place where we provide value uh, in terms of providing compression, compression solutions. So when it comes to uh, uh, um, where we see the most value, in the, in the vehicle refueling space, there's a lot of uh, interesting developments in the heavy duty uh, vehicle market. So buses, trains, uh, large, uh, large, um, large vehicles. And where we see that, why, we, why I say that this is interesting is that um, it, you, you have the two different fueling standards, uh, 350 bar and 700 bar. Uh, one of the challenges with 700 bar is that the, uh, the expense of compression is ex very, very expensive. And so we're really focused on uh, 300, the 350 bar, the heavy duty vehicles, and we can provide uh, compression solutions at, uh, that are much more cost effective than some of the other technologies that are necessary to get up to the higher pressures. And then can you explain for the audience for which type of vehicle you need 700 bars and for which type of vehicle you need 300, 350 bars? Oh, yes. Um, why? <laughs> yeah, so uh, your Honda Mirai, uh, the, the, uh, the Honda, no, Toyota Mirai, the Honda Clarity, all of your passenger vehicles, uh, they really need that 700 bar tank to really get the, the, the size to, to fit into a small passenger vehicle to get the range. Um, uh, where you see a lot of 350 bar applications is where your range is not as much of an issue and you're more interested in uh, getting the economics of the, that particular use case um, to be more favorable. So we're looking at uh, um, uh, forklift trucks, um, buses, trains, uh, um, uh, you know, port applications uh, in, in, in shipping uh, and uh, as well as um, uh, ships. So for um, uh, small vehicles, uh, cars, uh, there is still no common standard. No one has agreed on using 300 bars, 350 bars. Uh, what about, is there an established standard for heavy duty vehicles and buses? Um, that's, one, uh, that's always one of the challenges with uh, um, a, a growing and, and uh, nascent industry is you know, getting some, some consensus around what the uh, standards need to be. So that's a, it's an ever-evolving uh, target, I think. And, um, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see where that goes. Okay, so from what I understand is that Rick's Industries is ready for the hydrogen um, infrastructure. Uh, you're ready to provide compressors, uh, especially for heavy-duty vehicles and buses. What are the biggest issues in building a hydrogen refueling infrastructure? Maybe you can both comment on the European market, the Asian market, and the US market. Um, all of these markets suffer from the same challenge in terms of uh, compression. It, uh, it's cost, cost, and cost. One of the, the, the infrastructure for, for ref vehicle refueling, um, you know, compression costs is a, a large portion of the overall capex as well as operating, uh, operating expense. So what we, are, what we are doing is taking a look and doing a lot of research in, um, in the key challenges that are, are associated with compression. So we're partnering with national labs and uh, thankfully the Department of Energy at, in the United States is um, kicking in uh, and, and supporting, uh, supporting research in uh, increasing reliability. So um, looking at uh, valves as well as sealing materials um, to, to bring down the, the operating costs because maintenance is a big, big challenge. But as well as the initial capital requirements is also a challenge. And that's really just a matter of, um, a, a matter of scale, getting the production volumes up high enough so that uh, we can bring the overall uh, cost of these, uh, this, this infrastructure and these systems and these stations down. Where will the demand come from? 
uh, the people, all, all, all of you guys out here today that are, are, are um, pushing this forward and uh, really making sure that uh, we're getting enough support from uh, governments and uh, uh, for around the world is, uh, I think, at the end of the day, what uh, is going to drive this. Uh, when it comes to consumer markets, uh, it's all about uh, making sure that the consumer has a, a good experience. And I think that uh, the more people we have out uh, test driving these fuel cell vehicles uh, and finding the value that uh, comes along with it uh, is, is just going to drive demand and uh, we're here to support that. Exactly. Is there any question from the audience? You have the chance to ask. Um, yes, come down to you. I'm definitely a defender of uh, the hydrogen, but I heard lately uh, that really the hydrogen, you put it into a tank, steel tank, and you have to make it very firm for pressure, but it fuses through the steel tank, and if you have, uh, in within 20 days or so, uh, you lose 30%, and this is a reason why for you cannot really put it into a garage because then uh, these fumes get into a garage. Is that true or...? Uh, if you're using the wrong tank, yes, that is very true. I, like I mentioned earlier, uh, hydrogen is a challenging gas to work with. Um, uh, that is if you're using the wrong, just a, a regular steel tank. Uh, a lot of uh, the tanks that are, are designed for hydrogen have special uh, special materials that are that prevent um, uh, permutation uh, permeation through through the walls. Uh, same thing, same 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 concept is uh, applied to the material selection for our compressors as well. So, what I would say is, um, once you're uh, Make sure to do your homework and uh, make sure that you're getting the right uh, the right equipment, and that should not be an issue. No. The question is if there's a, um, a material that eliminates, uh, so it, re um, well, so, yeah, so that you get 100%. Uh, you don't lose any energy. Uh, that is a that is a great question. Uh, I am a mechanical engineer by by training, and I must be honest, uh, materials was never one of my favorite subjects. So I would have to defer to uh, uh, somebody who's perhaps a little bit more knowledgeable to say whether or not it's a hundred percent. But what I can say is the the tanks that are in uh, in use today are extremely safe. They've been vetted, and they have the right. Uh, uh, um, uh, analysis and standards that have been ap applied to make sure that they're safe for, for use in the home. Before we come to an end, I have this question. Um, so whenever you use a compressor uh, to compress hydrogen, you also lose energy. Yes. How much energy do you, do you lo will you lose with the RIGS compressor? Well, the, the, uh, the, there's a number of variables that uh, come into play and the challenging thing is uh, really kind of narrowing that down. Um, what what I would say is uh, that the 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 efficiency of our compressors are so, uh, some of the highest. Um, uh, so what I didn't mention is we have a couple of different uh, groups, and uh, um, um, our aerospace group has some of the highest power to weight ratio uh, compressors in the world, and. Uh, we pay special attention to efficiency. So the efficiencies can range anywhere from 60 to, to 80 or 85%, um, depending on the size and the particular application. So it really depends. Um, it's a, there's a lot of moving parts, to say the least. Christopher, um, who should come and work with you? Who should come and visit you at your booth? Um, if you have any needs for hydrogen, uh, come stop by. Uh, actually, everybody should stop by. Okay. Uh, we're looking for partnerships with electrolyzer companies, uh, first and foremost, because they're producing hydrogen. Um, but uh, again, if you have any concepts, any ideas, we're always looking to, to innovate and find new ways to, to come up with uh, value for our customers. So at the end of the day, you know, come with your ideas, and we're always happy to, to um, entertain ideas and, and move them forward. 
Thank you, Christopher. I'm very glad you brought that topic up, the whole value chain. We need value for the customer. We need end-to-end -end solutions. We need turnkey solutions. This is something very important, and I hope to see you here again next year uh, um, with a whole a solution. Um, so once again, thank you very much. That was Christopher Allen from Rix Industries. They're celebrating 140 years of the company. <laughs> thank you. Please stay seated for our very last interview of the day here at the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries uh, Fair at the Hanover Fairground. Uh, our last topic will be discussing power to liquid technology. And for that, we'll hear Dr. Robin White. He's the group leader at the Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems. Please stay tuned. It will stay right away. It will start right away. <laughs>